Blue Sky is one of the many social networks that sprung up in the wake of all of Twitter's issues late last year, alongside networks like Mastodon, Cohost, Post News, and Substack Notes. However, I think Blue Sky is probably one of the most likely ones to stick around for the long run. I'll admit, I'm a bit partial towards Mastodon myself. It's certainly the largest Twitter alternative so far, and I run a public Mastodon instance, so I'll be approaching this video with a bit of that perspective. But Blue Sky does have a lot of interesting things going for it. Let's talk about what it actually is. Blue Sky was started by Twitter themselves in 2019 as an internal project to investigate decentralized social media. Proponents of existing decentralized networking platforms saw Twitter choosing to grow their own standard instead of adopting the existing ActivityPub standard, which is what Mastodon uses, as a big red flag from the start, but the Blue Sky team did have a number of legitimate concerns with ActivityPub. We'll talk more about that later. Eventually, in 2021, Blue Sky Social was spun off from Twitter and now operates as an independent company, even as a competitor of Twitter themselves. Earlier this year, Blue Sky launched as an invite-only beta on iOS and later Android, and that's where we're at now. I think that the biggest factor when evaluating social networks has nothing to do with its features or its technical innovations, although we will get to those. It's all about the culture that they're cultivating. Blue Sky at the moment seems to be very intent on replicating exactly what Twitter was. This is a very polarizing topic for people. On one hand, many people on Mastodon moved there specifically to avoid many of the toxic aspects of Twitter that they'd grown sick of over the years. On the other hand, many Blue Sky proponents see Mastodon as too formal and too opinionated about features and moderation. I've been using Blue Sky for a few weeks now and the vibe is definitely different from Mastodon. I think that they are achieving what they set out to do, but the sense of community that you might get from local timelines and boosts on Mastodon is definitely lost in the mix. I think a large part of this is the invite-only structure of Blue Sky. While invitations have ramped up significantly in the last month, it's still not really a social network that you can bring your own social groups to, and invitations are distributed pretty inequitably and arbitrarily across the network. What this has resulted in is a very clicky experience. If your whole Twitter social graph has moved to Blue Sky, it seems to be a great and engaging experience, but if you come in as an outsider, it's very difficult to get your voice heard, and the people you might normally connect with are probably locked out from joining. This is an opinion I've heard from multiple Blue Sky users, that it feels like the same 20, 30 accounts dominate the trending what's hot timeline while the rest are relegated to the shadow realm. Alright, let's get technical. I mentioned earlier that Blue Sky found a number of things with ActivityPub to be problematic, and the biggest one of all is account migration. The state of moving your accounts between ActivityPub servers is a bit bleak to say the least. Mastodon and a few other services allow you to bring all of your followers to a new account and leave a note on your old account saying where you've moved to, but all of your old posts, your old username, and any other account information doesn't move with you. If you use software which doesn't support follower migration, which many even large software implementations like Peertube do not, there's no way to move between accounts at all, short of telling people to follow your new account and hoping for the best. Blue Sky's at protocol, on the other hand, offers total account portability. You can move between Blue Sky servers while bringing your identity, your social graph, and all of your posts along with you. Having that control over your online identity is a huge benefit which Mastodon lacks. In short, moving accounts on Mastodon is a bit like getting a new email address. Sure, you can forward your emails to your new one, but you still have to give out that new address to everyone you know, and it's just generally a pain. Most people just won't do it, which is why it's common for people to stick with their email address for decades, even after better providers spring up. Migration on Blue Sky is more like moving your phone number between cell carriers. Once you've ported your number, you get the benefit from a better network, and nobody who already has your phone number will even notice a difference at all. Another Blue Sky feature is something they're called Composable Moderation, an approach which decouples moderating the network from running the network servers, which are two entirely different skill sets. I personally think that this is a big problem with Mastodon, the fact that running a server means that you're personally responsible for all of the moderation on that server. Time and time again, we've seen even large Mastodon servers go completely offline, and the common thread isn't issues with funding or infrastructure, it's the challenges of moderation becoming too difficult for instance admins to handle. Blue Sky's approach to moderation opens the floor to anybody being able to label posts with tags like spam or not safe for work for moderation, and in turn, you're able to follow the moderation policies of anyone you choose independently of where your account is hosted. One approach Blue Sky mentioned could be AI-driven content labeling 
but moderation could also be done totally manually by interested parties, similar to how it's handled on Mastodon now. Being able to subscribe to moderators and potentially layer different moderation policies from multiple moderators you trust sounds like a much more scalable approach to handling problems on the network, and should be much more effective at distributing the effort required to keep the network safe. Another huge advantage of Blue Sky is full network search. This is another polarizing topic for many on Mastodon, which doesn't have full text search because many involved with Mastodon development believe that it allows harassers to find people to target and enable other toxic behavior. However, focusing on just that bad behavior ignores the massive benefits that search provides to people. Not only does search make it easier to find people and topics you're interested in, but it also enables finding information which may not exist anywhere else. One of the things that I use Twitter most for was finding the latest information about current and especially local events from people who are directly involved in those events. Being able to instantly find discussions on any location or topic is huge, and it's something that I sorely miss on Mastodon, where I have to either hope that the people in my network happen to be talking about it, or that a hashtag picks up enough steam to become trending. There's a huge gap left behind by Twitter in this breaking local news segment, and Blue Sky might be best poised to fill it in. All right. So we've covered some of the good things about Blue Sky, let's take a look at what's not so great. And this first one's a big one. Remember all the nice technical features like account migration and composable moderation we just talked about? Yeah, <laughs> those don't actually exist. In its current beta state, Blue Sky is completely 100% centralized on the server operated by Blue Sky themselves. There's no migrating anywhere else, and there's no moderation outside of Blue Sky's team and algorithms. All of this stuff is being worked on. Blue Sky and its at protocol are open source, and we can follow its development in real time. But this doesn't change the fact that their defining features are little more than our roadmap, and until we actually get to the finish line, we only have these promises and blog posts to show us that Blue Sky is on the right track. It's not like them giving up on their decentralized vision is out of the question. There are plenty of examples of companies embracing open, federated standards only to close their doors once they've amassed a large enough user base to be self-sufficient. If Blue Sky attracts the right groups of people in large enough numbers before their federation is functional, what's stopping them from changing course and locking those people in on their centralized server forever? Related to this is the issue of Blue Sky's corporate model. There's a lot of reporting that Blue Sky is Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter's new social network. But while he is on the board of directors, he is virtually uninvolved. Jack actually does have his own social network, Noster, which is blockchain based and in my experience infinitely worse than both Blue Sky and Mastodon, but maybe that's a future video. All that being said, the funding and business model of Blue Sky is still certainly cause for concern. Its close ties to VC funding and existing big tech companies mean that Blue Sky will eventually have to become a viable business, something that Twitter themselves always struggled with. Blue Sky's future monetization plans are nebulous at best, and it's hard to recommend switching to something without a very clear-cut future. Blue Sky is actually pretty unique among all the new social networking sites popping up, and has some ideas that I definitely want to see succeed. At the same time, networks like Mastodon already provide more than a good enough replacement to fill the hole that Twitter's left behind. It's very hard for me to recommend Blue Sky in its current state. But remember, it is still in beta, and their team has plenty of time to improve all of these shortcomings. More than anything, a social network that you can't even bring your own friends to yet just doesn't make a lot of sense. But looking at the broader picture, there are so many questions about the future of Blue Sky that are currently leaving us hanging. I'm a big fan of competition, and I think that there's certainly space for Mastodon and Blue Sky to coexist. But right now, Mastodon just makes the most sense for anyone looking to leave Twitter to try out first. I hope you liked this video and noticed an improvement in quality over my last one. Let me know with a like and a comment. If you haven't watched it yet and you want to learn something else, go check out my last video on passkeys, the latest push by Apple and Google to eliminate passwords forever.